Grab your notebooks and your pencils. <laughs> How does your story start? Welcome to Sing Show. Stage and lights are all set up. So now we proudly present to you the Orchard Elementary Group Page Sing Show. 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 Hello, sing. Wait, something's not right. What? What? What are these? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Those remind me of a song. Hmm. It goes like this. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Let's sing the vowels. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Let's sing it with E. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I, I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Oh, I like to oat, oat, oat apples and bananas. No, I like to. Oopples and banoonoos, banoonoos. I like to oot, oot, oot. Oopples and banoonoos. Now I am through, through, through with A E I O U. And sometimes, why? <laughs> Maybe later. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite shows to work on and write for is Power Rangers. Not only do you have these great big action scenes with giant robots fighting crazy monsters, but all the heroes, the Power Rangers themselves, are actually kids. We're obsessed and on the quest to find the best for our quest to be impressed, to pass the test. We will not acquiesce. Our video is now compressed. The staff will be suggest. Here's our special guest. Hey there, Sing Show friends. My name is Johnny Hartman, and I am a screenwriter. What does a screenwriter do? Does he pick up a crayon and start scribbling and writing all over your screen? No. A screenwriter writes television shows and movies, and I wrote a movie called The Reef 2, an animated movie, and another one called Jungle Shuffle, and a television show called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well as a television show called Thomas Edison's Secret Lab. That was a fun, lot of fun to work on. It was about science and there was tons to, to learn and, and, and still have fun with. I have also written a lot of episodes for Transformers, Robots in Disguise, and most recently, um, Power Rangers, Beast Morphers, and the latest show, Power Rangers Dino Fury, which you can actually catch episodes of right now on Nickelodeon and Netflix. Every television show or movie that you watch starts with a screenplay, basically a written document that tells the story and so the filmmakers know what to do on set and the animators know which scenes to animate. So the first thing you're going to see when you start writing a screenplay is this, a blank page. When you write a script for a movie, that's about 100 to 120 pages. And if it's for a TV show, depending how long the episodes are, 
it's about 15 to 60 pages. So that's a lot of pages. The great news is anything you want to happen can happen on this page. So how do you write a screenplay? The basic format is quite simple. Look, you start with a slug line. There's no slugs in it. There's no, there's no snails in it. It's just where you tell the reader and the filmmakers where your scene takes place and what time of day it is, day or night. Then comes the action line that tells you exactly what happens in the scene. Is somebody being chased? Is somebody doing something dangerous or maybe something really crazy or kind of funny? And then you have the first character. You write down the character's name in big capital letters in the middle of the page and what they're saying. That's called the dialogue. Then you have another character probably come into the scene and you write their name and what they're saying. And that's the basic format of every scene and how you write it. Okay now, here is a very small sample of what a written scene looks like. Okay, let's take the scene right now that we're in. It starts with interior office day. Interior means inside. We're in an office and it's daytime. So now we know where the scene takes place. Then comes the action. Johnny sits at his desk recording a segment for the Awesome Sync Show. Right? It describes what the main character, that's me in this case, is doing. Now let's see what Johnny says. Johnny. Hi kids. I love the Awesome Sync Show. That's a great line of dialogue right there, isn't it? Let's see what happens next. Suddenly, a giant gob of slime falls from the sky. Okay, maybe we should cut the scene right there before that actually happens. But now you have a, have a bit of an idea of what a written scene looks like on the page. One of my favorite shows to work on and write for is Power Rangers. Not only do you have these great big action scenes with giant robots fighting crazy monsters, but all the heroes, the Power Rangers themselves, are actually kids. They're a little older than you guys, but not that much. And that means we can tell stories that you guys can really relate to, that you feel, you know, you're struggling maybe with and every day. You know, making new friends or dealing with a bully or doing homework while also trying to do um, other things that you love, in, in their case, you know, um, fighting giant monsters and giant robots. And that's why I always keep some Power Rangers toys on my, on my desk to remind me when I write the show of, of how much I love these characters. And yeah, screenwriting is a great job. You get to have toys on your desk and, and play with them. And then you get to write stories and a few months later you see them on TV. It's something I really enjoy about the process and I hope you guys do too when you watch the show. So we already know that every television show or movie starts with a screenplay. But every screenplay starts with an idea. Sometimes it's your idea, a character you came up with and a story you came up with that you really love and you want to tell. So you write the script and you hope to sell it and, and, and get it produced somehow. Um, and sometimes the idea comes from somebody else, like a production company or even a toy company. And they already have the characters and they ask you to write an episode for them or maybe a movie based on their, on their characters or their idea. Both are super fun. In each case, before you write the script, you have to outline it, just like with homework, right? You have to really make sure you know exactly every scene you're going to have to write, and then write it and rewrite it until it's as good as it can be, and then you get to work with the director very closely, and sometimes with the actors to put the last touches on, and then hopefully at some point after they've created the, after the, the show has been produced, you get to break out the popcorn and sit back and, and watch this story that you've written um, on the screen and share it with others. Thank you, Johnny, for sharing with us today all about your career and your writing process. I'm feeling pretty inspired to get out there and write some of my own stories with dialogue. You know, it reminds me too mm -hmm. that I need a haircut. <laughs> That's right. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe you could help me. That reminds me of a song. Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, maybe you could help me. I think so, and I think we might need your help too. Mm. Get your scissors ready. Yes, carefully. Here we go. Oh, Johnny, get your hair cut. Hair cut. Hair cut. Johnny, get your hair cut just like me. Ooh, 
It feels nice. That was I, a pretty good start. It's definitely a pretty cleaned good start. up around the edges, but yes, um, but I think we might need to take off a little bit more. Yeah, especially from the back. <laughs> I don't want to mull it. I think uh, yeah. maybe we need double scissors. All right, here they go. <laughs> I'm not left-handed, but I think I think I can do this. Just do your best. All right. Here we go. Oh, Johnny, get your hair cut, hair cut, hair cut. Johnny, get your hair cut, just like me. How's it looking? Pretty, Better? pretty fancy, yeah. but still, feels still a little could long. use a little cleaning up. Yeah. A little okay. bit of cleaning up. I think this time get creative mm. with your scissors. Yeah. How Can you, you make, make scissors with your arms? Or, or maybe your fingers, or or some other I part. I think I'm going to make scissors with my thumbs oh. this time. Oh, did you cut yourself on that last time? Oh, a tiny, a tiny cut. Yeah, you better maybe use I'll the use small, small scissors. Small yeah. scissors this time. yeah, I'm gonna get the big ones out though. Here we go, Ooh. the hedge clippers. Oh dear. Yeah, right. You know, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Johnny, get your hair cut. Hair cut. Hair cut. Johnny, get your hair cut. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a funny stereo sound, too, as my hand moved in front of my face. Oh. Well, it's feeling pretty good. I think you look pretty good. But I think I'm going to go get some mousse. <laughs> For a little style. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> Hi, readers. It's my pleasure to welcome author and illustrator Hudson Talbot. Today on Sing Show, he's going to share with us about his brand new book, A Walk in the Words. Please welcome... Hudson Talbot. I tell you what I, I really uh, love in some ways, um, certainly as much as my art is writing because that's that for me is really an achievement. That's That didn't come naturally. Come on now, make some time to read. It's Mrs. Ray's book bag. Hi, my name is Hudson, Hudson Talbot. I live in upstate New York in the Hudson Valley, believe it or not. And uh, I write and illustrate books uh, for young readers. And I did this book. This is my latest book. It's called A Walk in the Words. And it's sort of my own story. Not sort of, it is my own story. As when I was a kid growing up and uh, sort of struggling with reading, but loving, drawing. And so I learned to tell stories through drawn pictures. Most of my life, uh, my slow reading, I hesitate to use the word dyslexia, but basically I'm dyslexic. When I was in school, there wasn't really a word. It wasn't just like a, uh, I was just slow, certainly at reading, but pretty good at some other things. I mentioned it in passing one time, a few years back to my editor, like I'd like to do a book that's about uh, a dyslexic kid. And I was originally just thinking of it as like, um, you know, there was this little boy and he loved to draw and blah, 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 all very third person. At some point, I think somebody suggested it would be a lot stronger if you did it in the first person, I, I you know, my story. And so it was a big step for me because that, that really meant I am putting my story out there. You know, it's like I'm really exposing myself now. Uh, but I'm really glad that I did because it, it, it means so much more to me now. I don't want kids to feel the shame that I did. We should all be proud of ourselves, just exactly who we are right now as we are. There's nobody else that's a Jen or a Josh, right? Or a Hudson, you know? or any of the people that are watching or listening to this. We're all unique in our own ways, and it's, it's great. You know, it's wonderful like that. Kids often ask me that. In fact, an easy answer, practice. You know, I just uh, always uh, been drawing it over and over, and especially with the horses. I'm from Kentucky, so I always had horses around me and loved horses. And that's my favorite uh, spread, as a matter of fact, what you showed, because it, it's really looking back on my uh, childhood. I just remember, you know, I drew horses this way when I was five years old and this way when I was eight years old. And now I can draw them this way. And they're, it's a uh, wing 
Pegasus and he's taken me away for to you know magic lands and adventures you know so um that that uh spread really sort of like uh in some ways the way i feel about uh, my my life and my imagination and where it's taken me well i guess i guess horses still it certainly was when i was a kid i drew a lot of horses let's see i can name a, a few things that uh it showed up in my drawings regularly, horses, dragons, dinosaurs, and cities of the future. I, you know, I was like a, a, a budding architect when I was a kid. And, you know, I would see, you know, series on TV like Flash Gordon and things like this that were just really cool. I love the costumes and, you know, the rockets going off in different directions. So currently today it's I really, I love a challenge. Horses are still challenging to draw. You know, human figure is always going to be probably the hardest thing to get right because everybody knows exactly what it looks like, you know, because we see ourselves in the mirror all the time. I am curious about everything. I, uh, I, I yeah, I, I, I really am. Um, I guess I am always curious about nature, life and growth and watching things um, change and, and how we affect them. You, you give them uh, plant food or fertilizer and they're happier, they're healthier. Or you put a house plant in a certain place it's getting more sun and it's telling you it's happy. You know, it's a wonderful feeling kind of that you're, uh, you know, you, you can affect the way they, they exist. Oh, and one more thing that I'm really curious about, dogs. I uh, did a book called From Wolf to Wolf, and dogs are the most fascinating of all animals, I think. And also just because I, I just got a dog six months ago with my partner, and it's a, 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 a giant golden doodle. The whole journey of dogs and humans together is so beautiful and so fascinating. There's two very different species decided to um, become allies over thousands of years. Wolves evolved into dogs, and we changed too because of dogs. Anyway, that I could go on and on about that. That the idea of, 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 of what species can do together to me is infinitely uh, inspiring for my curiosity. Art always came out of me just from the early days of just like breathing, you know, it's just always a natural flow for me. But um, writing is something that I really work at and I, uh, I'm i really proud of when I feel like I've done something that's okay, publishable, you know. <laughs> a big sing show thank you to our two special guests this week, Johnny Hartman and Hudson Talbot. We hope that you'll check out Hudson Talbot's website where he has some pretty cool interactive pictures that you can click on and find out more about those characters and the books that he has written and illustrated. Our last song this week is inspired by both Johnny Hartman and Hudson Talbot, reminding us that sometimes the best way to move forward is to slow down, find your pace, and enjoy the beauty of the thing. You see it so clear blank page before you fills you with fear you've drawn it before a whole ream of failures litter the floor you stare into the white maybe this time you'll get it right just start with a line a slash on the canvas a step into the light 
you'll get better the more you do it. Just keep going, you'll improve it. Take a walk, enjoy the beauty of the thing. You open the book. Sentences sprawl like a blackberry bush. The words look so sweet, but they're covered in thorns and just out of reach. Words, words, words. Some seem familiar, but so many words just start with one. A friend in the forest, a glimmer of sun. You'll get better the more you do it. Just keep going, you'll improve it. Take a walk, enjoy the beauty of the thing. You'll get better the more you do it. Just keep going, you'll improve it. Take a walk, enjoy the beauty of the thing. Take a walk. Enjoy the beauty of the thing. Just slow down and find your pace you're not alone it's not a race we'll see you soon Barbara, watch out for that uh, banana peel. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. <clears throat> I'm Melvin, and this is the news. Apple prices have skyrocketed. People are going bananas over apples. Only a penny a pound? I think not. In the weather, mostly cloudy skies, but watch out for <clears throat> oh, giant gobs of green slime. Hmm. Also, Joe's Barber Shop is offering discounts for people named Johnny. Jonathans are also welcome for the same discount. Finally, we have another picture of a dog. Hmm, really? Well, that does it for this week's news update. I'm Melvin, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.